After dark vapors have oppressed our plains for a long, dreary season, comes a day born of the gentle south and clears away from the sick heavens all unseemly stains. The anxious month, bereaved of its pains, takes a long lost right the hue of May. The eyelids with the passing coolness play like rose leaves with the drip of summer rains. The calmest thoughts come round us as of leaves budding, fruit ripening in stillness, autumn sun smiling at eve upon the quiet sheaves. Sweet Sappho's cheek, a smiling infant's breath, the gradual sand that through an hourglass runs, a woodland rivulet, a poet's death. solitude, if I must with thee dwell, let it not be among the jumbled heap of murky buildings. Climb with me the steep, nature's observatory, whence the dell, its flowery slopes, its river's crystal swell, may seem a span. Let me thy vigils keep amongst boughs pavilioned, where the deer swift leap startles the wild bee from the foxglove bell. But though I'll gladly trace these scenes with thee, yet the sweet converse of an innocent mind, whose words are images and thoughts of mind is my source of pleasure, and it sure must be amongst the highest bliss of humankind, when to thy haunts two kindred spirits flee. Four seasons fill the measure of the year. There are four seasons in the mind of man. He has his lusty spring, when fancy clear takes in all beauty with an easy span. He has his summer, when luxuriously spring's honeyed cud of youthful thought he loves to ruminate, and by such dreaming nigh, his nearest unto heaven. Quiet coves his soul has in its autumn, when his wings he further closed, counted so to look on mists in idleness, to let fair things pass by unheeded as a threshold brook. He has his winter, too, of pale misfeature, or else he would forego his mortal nature.